And we are back. We're here live at the arrival event in Las Vegas at the Lovely Link Casino. Lovely if you're a Vegas person, like I, we already know, I am a Vegas person. But I'm here with Martin, Martin Stoll, yeah. and he's from Sparkloft Media. And Martin, why don't you let everyone know uh, who's watching who you are and what you do, just kind of like a good brief, because some people might not be familiar with what you do. Sure. So Sparkloft Media is a social media agency. That's sort of the best fitting label for us. Um, We've been doing this for quite a while. We started in 2006, actually, a long time ago. Uh, and our biggest focus is the travel and tourism industry. We have clients in other verticals as well. Uh, but we started in travel and tourism. I think that's an area we are very passionate about and uh, understand very well. So tell me about, you know, I like to go back to the founding story with, with folks who have <laughs> kind of done that. You know, we talked with Jose and his one van in Mexico, which is a great visual. I'm sure you probably didn't have one van in Mexico. We didn't even have like, a van. No van, no van. I was in Mexico, but um, tell me about how, you know, how you got started many years ago and why did you choose travel? Was it conscious or you were already in travel? Sure. So um, we started in, in 2006, as I said, and we started as a software company uh, with a social software product. So it was... Uh, the closest day was probably like a, a TripAdvisor on, on steroids, although I will admit that TripAdvisor has a slightly bigger reach. Uh, slightly. Uh, sli <laughs> minor, minor. <laughs> um, our um, sort of spin was um, that we had a recommendation engine. So if you, in, you know, in 2006, if you and I go to TripAdvisor and we look at sort of where should we stay, what should we do, we would see the same content. And we built a recommendation engine where um, you could go in and raid restaurants, uh, hotels, attractions, wherever you go. And when you go to a new destination, you push a button and it would say, based on your profile, here is where you should um, stay, what you should do, where you, you should eat. And those are uh, user-created <coughs> profiles, to be clear. Like, so all, so I, all, I create all user-generated so, content. So not like where someone steals your data or takes your data and kind of makes profile for you. It's no, kind of like it you was, opted in and yeah. Yeah. And so the, um, the, the business model was a, um, a B2B software as a service play. So we had a, a platform that we licensed to airlines uh, and, and BMOs. So if you are a, a, a tourism board, you could have a white label community where visitors could write reviews and share them, right? So. And this um, was 10 years ago? How many years ago was this? In 2006. So this was early. Yes. So Cause, it, it cause might now be they're still so doing this stuff. Yes. And now we're, still we're telling to... ourselves we were just too early. Too early. Right? Absolutely. It could not mean any, possibly right. be anything right. else. So we were too early. Um, no, but it was working really well. Um, and then um, uh, social media and Twitter started. And so we had clients who we had licensed the software to and who thought like we know we are the experts in anything social, right? Although I think the term social back then didn't even exist. But we had clients who were using our software who came and said, there's this new thing called Twitter. Nobody was talking even about Facebook back then, right? And the people who founded Instagram probably hadn't even been born yet. Um, and um, they said, we will, we, will you help us figure out what to do on Twitter? And so uh, we were doing the software and then did sort of had a consulting business on the side. Uh, helping mostly visitors bureaus to, to figure out what to do on, on Twitter. And then uh, it was the right place, right time. We were very lucky. One of the first things that we did uh, got picked up in the New York Times and, and got really big, um, big distribution. Um, we, we invented the first virtual visitor center with the idea of you, uh, instead of going to a physical visitor center and asking what should we do, you would go to Twitter and you would crowdsource it and you would ask people right. who live in the city. Um, yeah, and then, you know, this, this part of the business got bigger and bigger and bigger, and um, it was, uh, I don't want to say, it was a little bit more fun than um, what we were doing on the, on the software side, and so then we uh, pivoted, as, as every, every good company story has lots of pivots, right? right? So we pivoted, uh, became more of a consulting company, and then realized in the end we are a, and a marketing agency specializing in social media. So that's, that's what we are at the moment. We'll so no more software at the moment? Yeah. Or do you still? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's very interesting. I don't think I've ever heard a, uh, a pivot because of the fun. Like, you know, no one ever says I pivoted. Usually it's I pivoted because the business model wasn't working or, you know, like, but the fun was, you know, the well, industrial. I mean, I'm sort of, sure the business I, you know, was better, think, but. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think the, um, so we were um, self-funded and we were um, cash flow positive. It goes going really well on the software side. But when you compete in that space and you, can, and you, you think about, you know, at some point you've got to compete with Turborize. You're not going to do that self-funded, right? So then you got to go uh, for, uh, for VC money and, and, and stuff like that. Um, and sort of that was then, you know, 2008, 2009, 2010 were not the, the best times to go and uh, find venture money and, and stuff like that. So, 
I think it's important. I think it's always an under, I guess maybe like underrepresented reason though. It's like, you know, if you hate your job and then you turn around and you realize it's your company and you hate going to work for yourself, like the whole point of working for yourself is to have a little bit of, I mean, it's yeah. harder in some ways, but it's also to have some freedom. Yeah, right? I mean, it's to not like the software yeah. wasn't fun, yeah. but sort of, but, but what, what I personally find super fascinating in social media is it changes all the time, right? So right. This, the stuff that we do today, you, you could not do six months ago because it just, Instagram stories didn't exist, right? Or Snapchat launches new features yesterday. That's gonna, so now we got to figure out what does it mean for our clients? What, do we, what are we going to do? And I find it exciting. Um, and that, there's two approaches to social media, I think, is the exciting one or the, oh, man, this is terrible because it changes all the time. Yeah. Like the stressful part where you're yeah. like, I, I can't keep up. I don't want to keep up. And that's good for you, though, right? Because oh, like, that's our job. It's phenomenal. Right, <laughs> right. It changed. We need more. You yes. Know? Like, yes. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit in, then about how you deal with the, I mean, not travel changes. I mean, it changes kind of, right? Travel is kind of this slower moving thing, but parts of travel change really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and social media just changes all the time. That's yeah. the whole point. They have to keep people addicted, yeah. right? Or keep, you know, them coming back, I guess I should say. Uh, how do you deal with that? What, what's your approach? Is it always just, watching and testing, experimenting, you know, how do you keep your team nimble? Yeah, um, so I think it, it takes a certain type of, of person to get a, a kick out of the change and not be intimidated by it or frustrated by it. And, and as we have a pretty young team, uh, so it's, it's always funny when we talk to clients and everybody's like, wow, your team knows a lot about social media, but they're so young. And you go like, yes, so like, who would you rather have of, <laughs> sort of figure out where social media is going, right? So. Um, I see that as an advantage. Um, and um, if, if you get a kick out of that, then, then there's a lot of, you know, something changes, a platform comes out with new features, and, and you go and, and try and figure it out, right? I mean, that's, there is no, I, I don't want to say sort of we are, we have anything that, that nobody else has. I think, I think we're just very um, focused on, we got to be fast, 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 fast. You know, we, um, Sort of one of the values we talk a lot about at, at Sparkloft is we want to have people who are curious, you know, who, who like to who like to dig in and, and figure things out. Because there's nobody who has a blueprint on what to do with a new feature or when consumer behavior shifts or people start doing something now on Snapchat that they didn't before. Um, you, you, you've got to figure it out as fast as you can. Curiosity is a skill. Yeah. I like to say because people think that it's just like something. Oh, I can be curious. Like, well, you have to. You can teach yourself to be curious. Yeah. You know, and it's also something that's so darn valuable. If you start with curiosity, you can probably do anything, yeah. you know, because you can figure it out eventually. It may take you two or three years if you're, you know, you shouldn't be doing it, but curiosity I like a lot, you know. Yeah. Uh, and on social media, what is, right now, do you feel like, are we past the peak? Is it always peaking, you know? What's going on in social media in the sense of, are we over it? Is it just going to keep getting more and more time spent on social media? Where are we, I guess, in the landscape of attention? I, so I, d I don't know if people can spend more time because like, it's India is only 24 right, hours right. and you can only... Sorry, what, two you hours? Can, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know, even when you know, now people are already on their iPad and, or iPhone uh, doing stuff while they're watching TV. Right? You cannot be on four devices at the same time. Some so people are on three, right? I'm, yeah, but I, it, is, it, it, gets, it gets to a point right. where you, you can't yeah, do it anymore. Yeah. Um, I think for me the interesting thing is where I think social media is at a... I don't know, an inflection point where um, the stuff that has been, that has gotten us to this point, I think is gonna, will have to change and, and will, will be scrutinized more. So when you look at, and that maybe it's not just for social media, but also for digital marketing as a whole. So in, in the beginning, way, way, way back when, when you think about digital marketing, it was like, it's so great because now we can measure things and we can see where the money is spent and yada, yada, yada. And then you look at, you know, click fraud and, and all that stuff. And maybe what you measured were not real eyeballs and people. And in, in social media, um, the same thing is happening where um, you have influencers that have massive a number of fake followers, you know, and uh, you don't really know, is this somebody who really has 100,000 followers? Do they really have that amount of influence or not? Or um, these tools that will like a lot of, uh, you know, that will go find certain hashtags like content that has that hashtag and leave generic contents back. You look at the whole Facebook, um, Twitter, uh, and Russia meddling and stuff like that. So I think there's going to be a lot more scrutiny uh, in sort of the, I don't know if it's the coming of age, but sort of the, the innocence, I think, has been lost um, a little bit. And at the same time, I, I don't think it's going to go away. I think there's um, more and more um, 
the, the platforms will evolve. I think some of the stuff that Snapchat is doing around the, the map feature and the heat map where you can see where, where are people at um, is, is super fascinating. Um, and, and you look at the impact that social yeah. media has had on certain industries and how important it is for restaurants today to have food presented in an Instagrammable you know, uh, in a way that it's easy to, to Instagram. I mean, it's crazy when you think about it because do we really go to, to a restaurant to look at food or do we go and have a, a, a meal that tastes delicious? But it's just the, I mean, the, the reality. part of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I used to own two restaurants and we built the whole restaurants around Instagram. You know, it's just about how can we make an experience that's just Instagrammable, you yeah. know, with the little places where people are, you yep. know. I mean, some of the restaurants are even giving like lighting kits and it's like, then it just becomes a little bizarre because, you know, you make a nice, cozy, romantic kind of sexy <laughs> vibe and then people are, have their phones and the like flashes on and there's yep. a side flash, you know? Yeah. Uh, how do you, so go back to the robots thing, you know, I think it, it's fascinating. So, you know, I, I posted on Instagram uh, a couple times since I've been here and, you know, it's almost like immediately you get like Vegas connection likes yeah. this post and just all these yeah. people that are not connected to me clearly yeah. just did a location, you know, location oh, no, based it's thing. Not, you know? It's not a person. It's, it's like, it's, oh, a robot, it's, they, it's, they it's set bot, it up. Yeah. yeah, right. Like a, a, a bot was set up. Yeah. Uh, so if the user experience starts failing, does that mean people migrate off the platform or do they trust it less? You know, what's like kind of the end result of that? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I some people out there are actually automating. Yeah. this kind of stuff, you know, yeah. and something they need to think about. Yeah, uh, and I, so I don't know where it's ultimately going to lead, but I think some of the some of the possible consequences uh, is already happening, right? So, it it um, in in the beginning you're super excited when somebody likes your, uh, you know, you go on Instagram and you see oh five people have liked my photo, or fifty have liked my photo, uh, and then you look at who who they are and you like it doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, and, and if that happens over and over again, it it, it loses the appeal, right? So I think one the the connection, the meaningful connections will become more important, right? And platforms that um, have a way to create those meaningful connections are going to be um, more powerful. Um, I think people will tune out more um, or, or just get numb to it, right? And for travel, does that mean that maybe that the, the in-person, the relationships, you know, actually coming to locations might actually keep, you know, it's never going to go away. You know, we're never going to be stuck in VR. You know, we want to actually have that face-to-face because -face. I know you're not a robot, at least I think. You think so? I don't know. I'm you could be pretty darn well. good. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's but, how you know, far robots right, come. Exactly. <laughs> We're real. We have a robot here. This is See? this is Robbie the robot. He's one of the originals. Yeah. He's like a classic toy. He's like one of the first kids' toys. Uh, so yeah. So if, if if robots kind of come into play, does travel benefit even more? I mean, so I don't know if it's going to benefit more. I think you know. So you look at it depends on what you define as robot, right? So you look at um, Facebook Messenger and some of the of how you can automate customer service and talking to. Uh, to not a human person, but a machine that solves my problem. Hey, I'm 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 okay with like that, the right? Messenger bots Absol and you know all, stuff yeah. like that. Um, so I think that the technology can absolutely play a, a crucial role in creating a better customer experience. But it's got to be right place, right time, right? So I, I I get nothing, no gratification out of a robot liking my uh, my Instagram photo. I get a uh, I find it beneficial in, instead of calling a one eight hundred number to rebook a flight if I can do that quickly in in Facebook Messenger with with a bot. So the technology itself is not bad. It's just sort of you can use it for good or you can use it for bad. It's connecting the medium to the problem. Yeah. Not just, you know, using That's it doing for fun. Goes, yeah, right. absolutely. Uh, are you staying at the link? Are you here? I am, Did yes. you get a text message I from did. Ivy? Yes, I what did. What did you think of text message? So, so some background. So uh, <laughs> when you check in at the link, about an hour after you check in, you get a text message from Ivy. No picture, just Ivy. Uh -huh. And she's your personal, personal concierge. And she, you know, asks you if she can help you. Uh, you know, what did, I just thought it was a little silly. But so, so I have not did talked. You try it? No, I, I have no. I have not I, talked. I ordered to, a to, to, I should have done it through her. I just yes, called. Yeah. I still just called yeah. though, and it's tech dude, right? Yeah. I, I didn't text her. So um, I haven't talked to Ivy, yeah. um, but I will. I will tell you uh, an experience that it's not necessarily. It's connected to this, but not with a bot. But I was staying at a Hilton at uh, Boston Airport um, a couple of weeks ago, and um, the phone in my room wasn't working. And I wanted to call room service. And it's sort of, when the phone is not working, it's really difficult to call and say, my phone is not working, so I can't order room service. So <laughs> I'm like, irony. okay, now I got to look up on my phone. I got to look up the, the phone number, call the main switchboard. And then I realized I had checked in on the Hilton app and gotten a, a digital room key, and they had a button where you can report a problem. So I pushed a button uh, and said, my phone is not working. I want to order room service. And like two minutes later, the phone rings. And what I didn't realize is there were two phones in the room. So the other phone was ringing. I just had not seen it. And... Um, 
somebody from from the team called and said, you know, we saw your room, uh, your uh, phone is not working. We'll send somebody. Uh, your phone is not working. And I said, no, no, it's now I know there's a second phone. Two minutes later, room service called and said, we saw on the app that you said you want to order room service. What can we do for you? And then maintenance called. So within 10 minutes, three people called uh, because I pushed a button on an app. So it wasn't a robot that called, but but the from a customer service experience, it was really, really impressive um, how you can use an app to and then get an immediate response, whether it's you know online or, or digital or in, in, with a real person. It's so. really cool that it was also three departments. Yeah. Because I always find hotels, one or two of the departments, uh, you know, no, they're not no. run as cleanly. You know, housekeeping maybe is good, and then yeah. you room service not so much, but they all seemed on top of it. Yeah, no, it was great. That's great. Um, let's pivot a little bit. Um, we have a, a video, I think, queued up eventually, right, Sky? We're ready. Okay, so we have a video um, that kind of showcases some of your work. What, to, uh -huh. to kind of set this up for the viewers. Uh, you know, what, what are we about to see and kind of let them know? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, this is a video we have on our website, which just sort of gives a little bit an overview of some of the brands that we work with, um, some behind the scenes um, visuals, sort of how we go out when we, when we produce content or, or social media programs. Perfect. Let's check that out, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about just the work you guys do and sure. some of your favorite projects. Yeah. Is that the new Batmobile? I had such a great time here at the studio tour today at Warner Brothers. My name is Saul Alcaraz and I'm the artist here at Santa Barbara Glassblowing Studio and I create magic in this place. So walk me through a little bit about what you guys do, you know, some of the stuff that viewers saw, what is the structure uh, behind your company and some of the cool things that you guys do? Yeah, so as I, as I mentioned, sort of we only do social. So we like to say we have a very niche focus, but in that, in that niche we go very deep. So if it's social, sort of we do it, we do social media strategies, uh, social media assessments when somebody comes and says, hey, this is where we are, can you have a look at it, competitive benchmarks, stuff like that. Um, we have full-blown production capabilities for content, so we do photos, videos, 360s, VR, GIFs, uh, animations, infographics, you name it. Uh, and I think the, the biggest, sort of the biggest thing we bring to the table is distribution. So it, it's great if you have fantastic content, it means nothing if you don't get it in front of the right audience. So we look at it as sort of a triangle where you have to figure out who's your audience that you want to reach, what's the platform that you're going to reach them, is it through influencer program, is it through paid media, is it through a viral, you know, stuff like that, and then what's the content that, um, that you want to get out. Um, and so that's the space that we, we, that we play in. So it's a lot of different aspects of, of what a brand might need, so they can kind of come to you and get a customized plan yeah. of, of how to approach yeah. it. Yeah. Any particular projects you've been especially proud of in the past six months, you know, things that, that you guys worked really hard on that kind of come to mind? Um, oh, there is... Um, there is so many. I don't want a single one. I will, I will tell you two sort of that are not within the last six months, but I that I uh, personally got uh, a kick out of because I think they were um, they were good projects. So we built um, uh, a booking engine for uh, a European airline client where you would uh, it was before Facebook changed its terms and conditions where you could log in. You go to a microsite. You log in with your Facebook username and password. You give the app permission to read the data where all your friends live. And we show you a Google map 
with the lowest airfare in the next 90 days to any of your um, of your friends, right? So you can be like, oh, there is Mary, you know, in Barcelona, who I haven't seen in the last five years, but there's a 39 euro fare to Barcelona. Why don't we go to Barcelona? So I think that was a, a, a very, what I like about it was putting a social layer over an e-commerce application, right? Where the social stuff really brings value because you're not going to go on kayak and do a hundred times, you know, a search to different destinations when you don't even remember where sort of all your friends uh, live, right? And so and we people show you move so often, too. I mean, yeah, you know, friends are all of a sudden, yeah. 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 So, so that was a good one. Uh, we did one for the Netherlands Board of Tourism uh, a couple of years ago that I also like very much where um, you could win a trip to the Netherlands um, and you decided what that trip was like um, by recording a 10 second video and whatever you could mention within 10 seconds was what you would win if you were the winner for the trip. The only caveat or the only condition was that what, what you mentioned in the 10 seconds had to be on a Pinterest page that we had built with different experiences. And there were some that you could easily buy and there were some like going into the Rijksmuseum with the curator looking behind the scenes which you, you you could not you know you could not buy but then you're like man to say Reich's museum takes like four of my 10 seconds do i really want to mention it so it really forced people to look at the destination product and really think about what could i do there what would be a good fit for me then record uh, out of a facebook app a 10 second video and then there was a uh, voting and somebody won the trip which they had described in those 10 seconds that's very cool well thanks martin i appreciate you taking the time today yeah, absolutely so thank you very much. We're going to be uh, taking a quick break. This is T News Live at Arrival, and we're presented by Resdy. So thank you very much, Resdy, for supporting this program. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, thank you.